In this video, I'm at my computer and I'm going to talk about anchor bolts. Hello and welcome to C.S. Wilson Draws. I'm C.S. Wilson and as I just said, today's video is about anchor bolts, how I model them and also how I handle them in the drawings. Now I know it sounds like it's all just about anchor bolts, but actually it's more about the techniques and methods I use to create the anchor bolts and not so much about the anchor bolts themselves. So even if you have no interest in anchor bolts, there's still a lot of information on how to create something from nothing and then make a drawing from it. There are several applications and components you can use to model all types of anchors, and I use those occasionally. But more often than not, I model anchors manually since I find it to be simpler and it also allows me to have a little more control over it, which leads to more predictable output in the drawings. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you shouldn't use the components that come with Tecla. The components are great and I'll use them occasionally to get things started and then explode and refine them, but that's a different method that I'm not covering in this video. For me, I usually end up drawing projects that don't have a lot of simple column and base plate situations or even normal type anchor bolts. So I just started manually modeling my own anchors, which is what you've all come for and why you're all here, so let's just get right to it. In this first example, I'm going to model an anchor bolt that's partially threaded at the top and bottom. The top threads start at the top of the concrete and also equal the amount of the projection, or the amount that sticks up out of the concrete. The bottom threads start a few inches up from the opposite end so that a nut can be threaded on and then shop welded. Here we are in the model editor, and this time around I'm using Tecla Structures 2017 Service Pack 4 and I already have a simple column base modeled to get us going for today's demonstration. I know I just said I don't normally have simple column base situations, but for the sake of this video, it's the most relatable reference I could think of, so just bear with me. Again, it's not just about the anchor bolts, it's about the process. Okay, to start, I'll create a new view using two points that are located at the center of the holes. It doesn't matter which holes or in which direction you want to look, just as long as it's in the center of the holes. Next, in the newly created view, I'll model in a beam entity using a rod profile. I already have settings for anchor bolts, so I'll use these. In order to keep the entity as a beam, I have to draw it from the top down. Otherwise, if it's modeled from the bottom up, it'll automatically be converted to a column entity, and I don't want that because most column parameters aren't compatible with beam parameters. So in my models, only actual columns are column entities. Everything else is a beam, contour plate, or an item. To get the starting point, I'll give a control point in the center of the hole by holding down the control key and left clicking. Then I'll set a hard point straight down to the top of concrete and then an end point where the threads will start on the bottom. This will be the shaft of the anchor bolt, or the unthreaded portion. To show the threaded portions, I model another rod profile, except I change the diameter to be 1 16th inch less than the actual anchor bolt size. Set the start point at the end of the main part and go up the distance of the threads, which is 5 inches, and set the end point. I'll do the same at the bottom of the anchor, which has 2.5 inches of threads. It doesn't matter which direction you model the threaded portions in since they'll be attached to the main part in the next step. But if you're like me and it bugs you that that top threaded portion is now a column entity since it was modeled from the bottom up, you can use the swap handles macro to flip it around and make it a beam entity like all the others. I have that macro attached to the contextual toolbar for easy access for just such an occasion. Now all of the parts of the anchor bolt can be bound together using the attach to part command in the added material dropdown. Simply select the part you want to attach things to and then select the parts you want to attach to it. In this case, I select the unthreaded portion first. Then select the two threaded portions so they can be added. In the command with a middle mouse click and that completes the shaft of the anchor bolt. Now to be clear, the threaded portions of the anchor bolt aren't really threaded in the model but doing them this way creates a breakpoint that can easily be seen and dimensioned on the drawings. And I didn't come up with this method. I actually saw it in a support article on the Tecla User Assistance website called Creating a Partially Threaded Rod from back in 2013. I'll put a link to that in the description area below this video. If you have a chance, you should go check out the support articles on the TUA. There's a lot of great content there produced by people who really know their stuff when it comes to Tecla structures. Now, let's get back to the modeling. To finish the anchor bolt out, I'll add the nuts and washers. This is really pretty simple since Tecla already has them in the profile catalog, that is, at least in the US Imperial environment. 
Again, I model these using a beam entity with some settings I've already created. All I need to do is set the size of the washer profile. Give a control point at the center of the hole. Go up an eighth inch or so. Set the start and then back down to set the end. Then do the same for the nut, except it's one inch tall. To make things easy, I just copy the top nut down to the bottom. Now that all the parts are done, I can create an assembly from them. Since the bolt shaft is one piece now, I just need to select the nuts and washer, right mouse click, and select add to assembly from the context menu, and then select the bolt shaft. To check that everything has been picked up, Hold the Alt key down and click on any part of the anchor bolt to highlight all of the parts in the assembly. From this point, you can copy the anchor bolt assembly around as you need. Now I want to show a slight modification to this style of anchor bolt, which is a bent anchor bolt. It's mostly the same with just a couple of variations. I start this type the same as the straight anchor bolt, except instead of using a beam entity, I use a poly beam entity. Fortunately, all of the beam type entities use the same properties dialog so I can use the same anchor bolt properties as before. Again, give a control point at the center of the hole and then set the start point straight down at the top of concrete. Go down the amount of the embedment and set another point. Then straight over to set the hook distance. In the command with a middle mouse click. Anchor bolts of this type are normally placed in a machine with a mandrel that matches the inside radius of the bin and then bent to a 90 degree angle. I use this chart to determine what the bend radius should be. The diameter or thickness in this example is one inch. So the inside radius is two times one inch or two inch. However, the reference line and its nodes are at the center of the rod. So we need to add half the diameter of the rod since that's where Tecla will realize the radius, making the actual radius two and a half inch. Select the rod, then double click on this point to open the chamfer properties. Select the rounded chamfer and type in an X distance of two and a half inches. Since there isn't a specific tool to measure the radius in the model, I just use the horizontal and vertical dimension tools. If you zoom in, you can see the segments of the arc and measure to those by snapping to the endpoints. The threaded portion, which is also the projection, is done the same way as the first example. Model a rod with a smaller diameter from the end to the desired length. Swap the handles to make it a beam entity. Don't forget it. Just kidding. You don't really have to do that if you don't want to. Attach the threaded portion to the bent portion. Model the washer and the nut, or cheat by copying them. Then create an assembly by adding the nut and washer to the bent rod. Again, check the assembly by holding the Alt key and selecting it. Then you can copy it around as necessary. So that's it for manually modeling anchor bolts. And remember, you don't just have to be limited to the anchor bolt types I've shown here or even anchor bolts at all. Experiment a little and use the methods and techniques you've just learned and apply it to creating your own items and assemblies. Now I'll show how I handle the piece detail drawings for these. I'm not going to get into the general arrangement drawings and creating anchor bolt layouts and typical drawings and all of that. I'm just going to use the anchor bolts I've created to illustrate how I would normally handle the drawings for these. To start with, I select the items in the model, then go to Drawings and Reports and click on Create Drawings in Master Catalog. This is the basic out-of-the-box master drawing catalog, but I've made some modifications to the drawing settings of most of these assembly types to strip out some information so I can manually complete the drawings. For these particular assemblies, I'll open the assembly drawings for multi-drawings category and use the US anchor bolt. Right mouse click and select create drawings. Since I already have the assemblies I want to create drawings for selected in the model, 
clicking on Create Drawings will only create drawings for those selected assemblies. If I wanted to create drawings using this anchor bolt template for all the assemblies in the model, whether they're selected or not, I would select Create Drawings for All Parts. I really only use that option when I create drawings using a rule set, which is indicated by a star. Once initiated, perform a numbering if needed, and the drawings will be created. And then open the drawing list to see the new drawings. Now at this point, I'm just going to show how I handle the drawings. This isn't necessarily the best way to do it, and it's certainly not the only way to do it. It's just the way that I do it. But I'm putting it in the video because I always find it interesting to see how others work with Tecla. So I think everyone finds it interesting, and maybe you will too. So with that said, here it is. So when I create drawings, this is normally what I end up with. I have most assembly types set up to have no dimensions, proper drawing scale, all of the colors and line styles, and the primary and secondary part callouts which I will move around a bit. You can see here where the distinction between the threaded and the solid portions of the shaft are, which makes it really easy to dimension. When I show the main overall dimension, I have a setting for that so that the text matches the main part mark. While I'm doing dimensions, I'll also add some special marks and tags as necessary. Most times I use the dimension properties to add these, but sometimes I'll just add a piece of text. When it comes to welds, I usually add those manually too, even if they're shown in the model. Again, I like to have total control over my drawings, so this works best for me. Another special thing I like to do is add a representation for the threaded portions. This is just a light line that is copied at even intervals and is really just to spruce up the drawing. In my opinion, it's usually the little things that make the biggest difference. So that's it. That's how I create anchor bolts, and quite frankly, it's how I create most of the parts and assemblies in my models to a certain degree. And don't get me wrong, I still use the connection components. There's no doubt that those can be huge time savers. I just don't rely on them all that much. I hope you found this video informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up on your way out. Leave a comment or question in the comment section below. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.